Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belongs wisdom and might. God gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Let us all join together and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as this in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom. The Most Reverend Doctor, to the Care Defense Forces, at the invitation of the Right Reverend Doctor, Joshua in this nation, in the Anglican Church of Kenya. Bless his steps here. May his words of encouragement and peace bring enlightenment to this community and this school. Bless all of us here and start with us for we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I want to request those who are doing the readings, the three readings, to come forward, all of them. Those who are doing the readings. Proverbs, Philippians, and then Luke. Who is reading the book? By riches and honor, our ways are ways of peace, peace and peace. And in her parts are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. That is the reading. New Testament reading come from the letters of Paul, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you 
look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, and thus the word of God. Our gospel Our gospel reading is taken from the gospel of Holy St. Louis, chapter 2, beginning to read the verse 41. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temples, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who had him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what, what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And this is the gospel of Christ. I was so delighted, young girls, and I heard you say. So if you can stand from those chairs without making a whisper and sing a nice chorus that you normally sing in the school, then you will see what I'll do next. Can you? Yeah, and we are indeed humbled to have you amongst us. 
May I, at this particular time, um, introduce uh, members of my team that we work with in the League of Girls. I have uh, my very able deputy in charge of academics and a very good team player, Mr. Henry Nyangaga, is <laughs> I also have the senior master in charge of academics, I'm Jacqueline Oundo. We have the Morning Express, also a senior master, Madame Salim Keta. We have the Head of Careers, also special programs for the The Head of the Gates, Mr. Ponten Togoda. We have our quality assurance results of the Sato and Jua that we have today. I have the director of studies, Mr. James O'Keefe. Head of the languages, Madam Mundo, and members of the language department, please all stand. Thank you. The head of science, Mr. Leonard, we are both with the team. I have the head of mathematics, Madame Florence of Bob, with the team. We have the head of humanities, my head of the department. and the support staff, led by Madame Monica Osuri, we stand up together with the team. We thank God for you. May I also uh, recognize the presence of uh, the colleague principals who are in the house. Thank you, Stella. Colleague principals who are in the house, thank you. Thank you. In a very special way, your grace allow me to introduce my family to you. Without them, I will not be here today. God has given me a beautiful family. I have my dear mother. My dad rested when I was six years old. And this great lady has mothered me and she still mothered me. Over 20 years after retirement, a senior high school teacher who retired as a senior education officer. I love this lady and I teach her subjects this year this year. Thank you very much. In the absence of my father, the brother to my mother became our father, and he's still here with us, journey with me. Even this day, together with the DC wife, uh, my Leia Muma and Mr. Luke Roma, please stand up with me. They are my other friends. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I also have my best couple in my wedding. Yes, Mr. Sabrina Sulama and Mr. Betty, please stand. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, last but not least, I have one that has given me peace and helps me better. Gives me peace to manage to a school here. And I believe in the profession. None other than my dear husband, the chief principal of the real world in high school. And this, I think, is a spouse that has taken two days off 
just to be with us and the something I don't take it for granted. As you pray, please remember also to bless him. <laughs> For taking time out of your busy schedule to pay us a visit. Your visit is to us on school and we don't take it for granted. It's a rare gesture and we are humble. And we pray that your presence here today will enable us to receive new and uplifting favor uh, from the Lord. We are really yearning for an academic breakthrough now that God has given us all the rest to building the infrastructure development. We have a very visionary and able board of management led by Dr. Dan Raburu as the chairman and a very committed parent association who is really supporting us uh, to achieve our goals in this school. Uh, the of Dallas is a humble and God-fearing institution and this has enabled us to come this far. As a school, we aim uh, at a holistic mentorship of the students as embodied in the church theme and gives us increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man found in Luke chapter 2 verse 52. That is our running theme as we mentor students in the community of God. And for this reason, the favor of the Lord has always been with us. His Lordship, the Right Reverend Dr. Joshua Witte, the Bishop of the Diocese of Mateno East, has always put our school at heart. It is true, as the Vita General said, the Vita Dallas High School is the heart of the Bishop. He has gathered us in good times and bad times. This is just in Hadamu. And we want to thank Mama Bishop that you were able to allow him to continue getting with us. So we thank you for your steadfast prayers. Now, uh, through the able leadership of uh, our diocesan bishop, he was able to force a very efficient and knowledgeable and spiritual chaplain who takes care of our spiritual needs and mental Wow. We are all saying in this school, courtesy of Reverend Victor Wishing, our mental wellness is top notch. Uh, this year, uh, we had a plan that uh, and targeted the school meal for 2023 to be 6.75. But with your coming with all the immense blessings, we are very confident of a new and uplifting favor from the Lord through you this day and we have therefore raised our target to 7.2 class <laughs> in the was now prophetic and we said yes we are claiming 7.2 class and we ask you to consecrate this new class because it is achievable in the kind of blessings that you have arrived with in this school. Uh, to address the Archbishop, our sincere request is that you intercede for us as we work diligently and seek God's blessings to make this a reality. Uh, we will receive new and restored blessings through you as the chosen servant of God. Our, the, the theme of this year is to arise and build, as found in uh, Nehemiah 2, verse, uh, chapter, chapter 2, verse 20. Arise and build, for God will prosper us. We are building the walls of our academics, the walls of our spiritual lives, and in totality, all that it takes uh, to be successful in today's world. And we believe that uh, this day, and even this meeting has been consecrated, you are, you are coming and been timely, and we shall be victorious through the achievement of our heartfelt desires this day. In conclusion, we are sincerely grateful for your visit and we believe that you will not go in vain. We feel privileged and honored to be among the very few Anglican sponsored schools that you have visited in this region. And this is a new story God is writing in our lives as ACK Little Rams. May the Lord richly bless you for us. Thank you. our able God chairman, Dr. Dan Raburu, one of his kind in this region, a very visionary, intelligent consultant 
stadium in Nyanza and the Western region. My able board chair, Karim Sam. Thank you very much, our board chairman, 
May I now uh, invite uh, the regional director and teacher service commission uh, to bring her greetings and introduce her team. Welcome, Sana, Madam J. Jackie, the regional TSC director, Nanda. Thank you so very much. 
allow me when I invite my colleague uh, uh, the Director of the Director of Education, Mr. Superintendent Sam. Thank you. 
And we need your time is going to be a blessing, and that blessing is a Thank you. Amen. Allow me now to welcome the bishop to bring his greetings and make his remarks, and finally take us forward with the program. I need to ask you. Yeah, 
we saw the school study. So we are very, very happy. We thank God for being here. And that is why you will not come to the houses of You can't come to the same East houses and you miss to come to the Ningo uh, school. We want to thank you. We are humbled that you are accepted to be here. And Mingingo, the Archbishop is going to pray for you. So that our desire here is meant. Do you think we can do it? Yes. I, I'm not getting. Are you, can you do it? Yes. Can you say yes, we can? Yes, Thank you very much. Our principal manages this school well with the chair. The chair is an Anglican, a staunch Anglican member. Our principal is a staunch SDA member. But what I love about the principal is what Mr. Spooner has said. And I have told them whenever I go to the offices looking for a leader, that me, I only need a Christian. And when a Christian touches the school, I tell the Christian, this is Anglican school. Our theme for all the schools, education, and our aim is that you don't only come out here with days, but we want you to come out here a wholesome person. Luke 2, 52. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and So that is what we would love to see in our class when they have come out of this place. And that is what these teachers are working on. You must pass the exam, but you must go out a well-led person who will also be called the person, not the people. You see those people passing there? We would like to, for example, Madam Senior Madam Ayri, you cannot call her people. You will say, our senior people has just passed, isn't it? See, that is what you want to ask. Yes. Are you coming at that? Yes. Look to 50. Thank you, God bless you. Baba, we thank you. We really cherish education in this region and in the whole of Kenya. And you've heard with your own ears that we must bring back to Bama. How many of you? Met Obama and you love it. Yes. So when we organize it next year, you will be here. Yes. So you want it this year? Yes. We will check with the ministry if they can allow us to be here in September before the exam. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. I would like to invite our Archbishop to speak to us. And I don't want us to sing this song. I would like to ask the teachers to do a presentation. Then we shall all go to the
this is the Girls Teaching Fraternity. Ready to present you an item.
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this moment. Indeed, it's a glorious moment before your sight. When your children gather to worship, to adore you, and to cry and call upon your, your name as you bring praises to your holy name. We want to thank you for gathering us here. In this your school, let's begin the King of God. To worship you, but also celebrate your goodness and how you care for us. Lord, we have come to join them in the celebration of a new teacher block, which we have just dedicated in your name. And it will be a safe space for our children to learn, to grow, and to be nurtured your way as they grow intellectually and grow in wisdom and in stature and in spirit. We also want to thank you for those who manage this school. We want to thank you for the fraternity that give direction and guidance. We want to thank you, Lord, for the church that shepherds so that, Lord, it will always be found to be in the right path, which is your path. But now we want to thank you for each and every of our brothers. That is so proud to be here. It is because of them individually and collectively for their future matters to you, O God. And this is where we prepare them for greatness. Lord, speak to us as we gather this moment. Your word, the word of truth, the word that brings knowledge to understanding, the word that gives us life. For it is only in you we find the word of life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Please let us be seated. My Lord Bishop, the Reverend Dr. Joshua Witty and Mama, uh, the Liga General and other clan the present here, the Regional Director of Education and the Regional Director of TSC and other education officials, the senior principal of our school, and your dear husband, who is also a senior principal in this school, and other principal presence, our teachers, uh, the non teaching staff, our very uh, reason why we are here, our learners and our students. I take this moment to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I to Amen. My Lord Bishop, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to come and I join you in the ministry God has given you in the Diocese of Assemblies. The Anglican Church as a unit has a call of duty and a call to care. That's who we are. Our vision is a growing and, and a caring Anglican Church born in proclaiming Christ so that many will find the root to heaven. And our mission statement is to boldly proclaim that gospel message through teaching, social transformation, preaching of the gospel, and reaching out to those who need uh, our services. Clearly, they proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior. So both in our mission and our mission statement, we are a child that cares about today and about tomorrow of each of us. And that care now goes us to the family where God blesses us as families with children who must be nurtured and brought up in a godly way to also provide them with all the reasons that they need to become better people in their own time and in the future. For children, give us the hope of nurturing the next generation. Amen. And as I look at them, that the future can be beautiful. That the great innovators, this country is beautiful. That the great engineers, we are the greatest innovators in technology. They are the great doctors that we are waiting for. They are the great uh, leaders this country is waiting for. But today and now is your preparation time. Mother Graceful, I look at uh, how you have changed uh, the, uh, the targets from 6 to 7.2 uh, just overnight. Uh, I think, as you see, it's completed. God will deliver it. But uh, next year, 
Jehovah to begin any height so that it's not said that's going to be it. And God is going to be there. God is going to be there. God is going to be there. But let us all attain this one and then we cast the next vision for the next target. Uh, my name, you have heard, is Dati Yosafis. By the grace of God, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya. Uh, and I praise God for the opportunity that God has given us to lead in this church. Not because we are better than anybody or we uh, have any other special skills than anybody, but God's people uh, appoint his own four times, uh, which is not to appoint. And I don't take it for granted that God has given us an opportunity to lead this great church uh, in our nation at this point in time. Even when we have all these uh, many uh, difficult situations we go through, He has provided us an opportunity to become the voice and uh, also to become the voice of Israel and give direction when God is with us prophetically. That is what He decides, uh, he decides us to do. I am a family person, so this is written for my wife, Esther, and our children. We are blessed with seven kids.
în compasul necesar ce oameni care se zice pe partea în picul, dar nu ca cea ce parără de cea ce care se zice cu soț a noi ce noi în distanță de viol, ai o să nu au oameni și în oameni și în care se alăbui în masă, dar când ai o să-i știți la poliție, îți poți să fie bocimbe din Bangladesh, nu fie de Vincere. And so that still in the world, we also benefit the way benefit so that they can have an opportunity to become and to grow. And the compassion slogan gives hope to my heart every day, and I want to quote it so that we may also use it as an encouragement to our young ones. This is what it says: We may not change the whole world. But we can change one child's world at a time. So we may not aim to change the whole world, but we can change one child's world at a time through education. Hello? Yes. Through what? Education. education and Christian nurture. And this is what it means. When you change one child's world by giving him or her quality education, that one child will participate and join those who are changing the world. Hello? I was one such a child. And recently I attended a launch of a book of one of the directors of World Mission in 1975 when I was being recruited as a school such child. And this is what I said, and I'm sorry because it's made me cry. That in 1975, when you were the country director, recruiting the first cohorts of children to be sponsored by World Vision, to us, we were numbers to you. Because he was dealing with numbers, isn't it? But behind every of those numbers was a soul and a real child, and I was one of them. So when I said that, he broke to cry. Because he said, indeed, I was dealing with numbers. I was writing my reports with numbers. And I know many of these officers write their report in numbers. When they come to the country, uh, regional director of education, what he has in his office is numbers of children in this county going to school. But behind every number you count is a soul and a human person whose life matters. This is what we need to remind ourselves in the leadership, even of the nation, that every Kenyan now we call ourselves 51 million Kenyans. These are not numbers. These are souls and persons who must be cared, nurtured, and protected and guided in the population. Uh, I want to give uh, a way of introducing my title of reading text, a quotation from Martin Luther King Jr who was one of the crusaders of human rights in America, a pastor of his own rights, and a, a community leader who rose to become a champion and a man of the cause of humanity. This is what he said. As a young man, with most of my life ahead of me, I decided early to give my life to something eternal and absolute not to these little gods that are here today and gone tomorrow, but to God, who is the same yesterday and yesterday, today, and forever. Shall I read this? This is my Luther. As a young man, with most of my life ahead of me, I decided early to give my life to something eternal and absolute. Not to these little gods that are here today and are gone tomorrow, but to God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to read from Paul's, uh, Peter's letter, second letter of Peter, chapter 1, verse 3 and following. And uh, the thrust of what I'm going to share is uh, the very purpose why we are here in school. School and education open up to the greater people, but become productive and effective. 
in all our ways. We are being prepared to become productive and effective in all our lives. And it's not only to the learners, but class teachers and parents and leaders and children of us here. We have been called to be productive. So this is what Peter says. And uh, he's writing to the people of God who are dispersed all over Asia Minor because of the persecution Christians who are being given and treated with uh, because people hated their way of life and faith. So they were under great persecution and they were dispersed all over. And, uh, uh, but Peter is encouraging them that they have a bigger uh, God than all those who are persecuting them. But they also have a bigger drive in them that they can be able to make a difference in their own lives as witnesses of Christ. Verse 3. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Thus, He has given us through these things His precious and very great promises. We can be able to underline that first. You know, what God has already given us. The Bible says His divine power has given us, in the light of what, everything, everything of Him. By observing His laws and commands, we have everything needed for life itself, but also for holiness and goodness. We have everything, the whole package. Because life is lived in the future, that's what uh, this young man, when he was young, said, uh, Martin Luther, he said, when I was a young man, and most of my life is in front of me, it's ahead, I'm not yet there. I committed myself to do things, to believe in that God who never changes, and to have something absolute as a result that I'm not going to pursue any other God. These gods who are later here or later there, and they come today, they disappear tomorrow, but the God who lives now, today, tomorrow, and everlasting. So, God does not only give us things now we see, although He does, but He has given us great promises of a great and a better future. That's why when the children of Israel were in exile, Jeremiah was sent, as we read in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, 10 and 11, that God gave these people hope. They are there in the exile. But the hope I want you to give them is not a, a big fixed thing. It's not an instant thing. They were told, in that city where you are in Babylon, don't be in a hurry. Pray for the peace of that city. Be part of that city. Marry in that city. Give your children to marry in that city. For God is not going to come quickly. It will be after seven years. After seven years. Can you imagine that? People who are waiting to be rescued now, and you are told it will be after seven years, but the promise is. And the Lord says, why? Because I have put plans for you. Plans not to harm you, to destroy you. But plans to prosper you. So that those seven years are your learning moments. You are there because you did your own mistakes. Now that's a correction center. And there I, I want you to learn enough so that after you learn, you come out better. Most of our learners sometimes think four years is a long time, isn't it? And you come and think, you know, when will I finish? That's a very short time. The great and big promises of God are ahead of us, not today. So don't rush your life. Hello? Yes. Don't rush your life. Use now to get that tomorrow. Use today to make tomorrow better. How are you going to use that today to make tomorrow better? By putting your mind and your heart to why you are here. The why you are here is for you to be nurtured, to be to be, to be grown in wisdom, in stature, in understanding, going through that subject every day, uh, learn lesson that comes every morning with a new topic or a new 
uh, you know, uh, new concepts are all geared towards preparing you to become a better person in the world. And this is what now is required of you. Because the first part where I read is God has already laid there that He has given us everything. Through Jesus, we have everything. He has given us all. The mind is there, the heart is there, the soul is there, the energy is there, the brain is there, everything is there. But we need now to add all that on what we can do ourselves. Because God does not imagine that He will bless us sitting and lying down. He will bless us when we are working. Hello? He will bless us when we are working. He will bless us when we are active. Because we have not been made dormant things, we have been made active things. And uh, uh, because we are active, God will bless us in our activities. So listen to this. Thus, He has given us, through these things, His precious and very great promises. So that, through them, you may escape from the corruption that is in the world today because of lust. And our world today is full of corruption of every nature, wrong teaching of every nature, wrong and misdirection of every nature. And uh, we are just, you know, in a big mess. Not only can the whole world with all these new teachings of uplifting the human spirit to the absolute. Martin Luther did not say that the human spirit is the absolute. Who is the absolute? God. Oh. Amen? Who never changed? Who is the same yesterday, today, and forever? So, the reason why God has given us everything is for us to be able to escape from what is destructive. And today there is a very strong attempt of destroying humanity by introducing things that lead you to willingly, to willingly self destroy things like drugs and substances of vicious And they want to make sure that they penetrate all those things into our schools and know it that is not able to make the right judgments that is a factor in ground to mess that human being. So we must be vigilant. The word of money means. And all of us as the ministry and the church, we must guard our schools from infiltration of all these things that come with the teachings of, you know, human rights, that children have right to do whatever they want to do, their minds are still in their formative stages. They need guidance. They need guidance. They are introducing all these things in what they call now progressive sex education to mean everything else. That children, even at a tender age, must be allowed to access to, you know, uh, 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 anything they desire and are lifted to say what my heart and my mind desire is what I should guess. They are being introduced now with this LGBTQ thing that if you have a feeling that you are a girl and you are a girl, you can be changed without the knowledge of your parents or vice versa. They want to hide uh, introduction of uh, sex and the destructive nature it has because it is addictive as many of those other things, pornography and other things that will detract our minds from focusing on the right things. And yesterday I was mentioning, it was the other day I saw that Sweden as a country has now accepted sex to be a sport in a game that we don't have to you know, the world is just going to hear It's going to hear And they are bringing all these concepts now through the internet and through the mobile phone, the mobile phone that our daughters and our sons are exposed in a very tender age, now has everything, everything that destroys the mind. Just like that. They can access to any site and they can watch and see things. We are also seen in our own country. Our young girls going out and take new photos and uh, create this hashtag, if you care what's happening. Have you heard of that? They make a hashtag, they create their new photos and say, if you care what's happening. Let them know how we feel. Because you have been treated to a world that what I feel is what I should get. 
This is not true. It is what God feels is right for us. It's what we should get. Not what us, my desires uh, can tell them. So friends, God wants us to escape from this destructive nature that is all around us today where uh, humanity is under attack and uh, the attack is to attack the family. I was reading a book recently by uh, a Turkish lady, she's mostly, her name is from the Quran, the book is How to Lose a Country. And she says you can't lose a country easily by external aggression or even a civil war. But then you can easily lose a country using a narrative that normalizes wrong to you, that it removes guilt and shame from it, so that people are free to make the wrong the right. And uh, through now removing guilt and shame of wrong to you, you will now serve the strong. And they shall lose the soul of the nation, the soul of our people, and that's how a country can be lost when it loses a soul. If we continue to open up to many of these new teachings that come, they will lead us into that space. Can you imagine what has happened in Shakapala, led by somebody who according to be a pastor, using the Bible, cheating people to die because death is better than life. That's what I was teaching. I was able to read some of the excerpts of his sermons. Most of the people, death is better than life because it is an instant way of meeting the Lord and your saving. And the death is not painful, it is enjoyable. And he says, in that moment when you are just about to go, it's like being a very sweet dream. And when you pass on, Jesus will be on the other side waiting for you. How many people did he need to die? Already by yesterday, over 250 have been exhumed. There are still 600 uh, which have not been accounted for. And more graves have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, discovered. Wrong teaching leads to death. And people are hired, even through religion, to sell the story. Christianity is not uh, exceptional. Neither Islam or other major religion. We have seen also in Islam the teaching of uh, jihad and the terrorist uh, acts that, uh, you know, when you kill people in mass, they teach people, not those who want to become, uh, you know, self-bombers and uh, suicidal, uh, you be waited on their side by 70 virgins. You know how to manage to use it as a, a puna. And uh, you are going to inherit quality life and you are going to go instantly to heaven, waited by 70 virgins of the other side. Such marriage in heaven, uh, as it is in the world. The Bible does not say so. So we have been using even religion to teach wrong things. And uh, thank you, Madam Principal, and the management of the school that we have a chaplain. We want to chaplain that we have chaplains in our school so that we are gatekeepers. People who are sick. What is right teaching and what is wrong teaching, so that we are able to save humanity from self destruction that people lead us into. And why do we lead ourselves into self destruction? Because we lack in the things that are going to be. So listen carefully what the Bible is telling us now. What to do in these circumstances? What are we supposed to do when we are in a world that is completely perverted and corrupted because of human lust? and human uh, craving of the self. Verse 5. For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness. So a good person. How does a good person look like? You support that goodness with knowledge. You must be knowledgeable. You must seek understanding. You are here to seek knowledge and understanding. That knowledge is not enough. Knowledge and self-control. Amen? What we are to knowledge, if we have no self-control, we will destroy ourselves, even with too much knowledge. Self-control with endurance, ability to be patient, to wait. 
That's why we are telling our class, you must wait for you to reap the fruit of your labor. You must wait. You must say no to those people who won't want to replace you uh, with the sense of that addiction so that uh, you fall out of school because of early pregnancies. Say no to it. So that you fall off school because of uh, indiscipline and indulging uh, uh, in things that are going to self destroy you, you, which are going to make you an addict and a zombie, say no to them. You must wait. Ability to endure. The moments that we have must be faced with a lot of endurance. Endurance, you must add godliness. To be godly is to be obedient to the will of God. There is no other explanation of how one can be godly other than to be obedient to the will of God and the commandments of God. So that when God says don't steal, you don't steal. When God says don't kill, you don't kill. God says don't commit adultery, you don't commit adultery. Don't fornicate, you don't fornicate. Don't bear false witness to uh, anyone. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. Don't covet. The Bible tells us only when we are in obedience to the command and the will of God is when we are godly and can live God in life. With godliness, our mutual affection to one another, friendship. We can't thrive in isolation as humanity. We grow together as family. We grow as friends, we grow as people who can support and care for one another. Affection, mutual affection means people who have the duty of care. That when I see you doing wrong, my duty is to tell you this is not right. Please change your ways and let us walk together towards the right path. Affection and love, that we judge each other, not to the vengeance and hate, but with love and care that embraces the other person. This is what the deficit we have in Kenya, especially when it comes to political competition. We throw love away, we employ vengeance and hate, and forget we are all made in the image of God. I pray that our future will not carry that forward, that our children will grow into a space where we can all see each other as brothers and sisters, irrespective of the languages we speak and the backgrounds in which we come from. When the African church was looking for their bishop during my time, I did not have the intention of putting my name there. Why? I did not believe I had the numbers that can make me an ambition. There were only nine massacres in the electoral college of 220 people. So I, I reasoned, what background do I have? And uh, what do you know, people normally say, uh, what bar is behind me first before I can go and get for other, other people to put into my bar? So I told my uh, bishop who had asked me to put my name, I don't see a chance and I don't think uh, I want to uh, just put my name in something that I can see uh, it, it is not possible. But these bishops were united and they all came to be a big number of them saying, it is not your tribe you are going to elect. It is the person you have seen. It is the decisions you have seen in your leadership, in your diocese. It is the person of the stature of who you are. It's what you are looking for. So forget about all else. It is you we want. So I simply told them what to do. They put my name there, but I'm not going to do it. So they did put it. And uh, they still have to bring uh, for me to sign. And I, 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 I complied and they signed. And all the rest is history because they unanimously elected me as the archbishop, which defined what the nation Kenya is known for. We support only those who come from our tribes. And that's why it's calling me to serve this church and the nation diligently without minding whether they are my tribe or not my tribe. I want to urge all of us to embrace love and care above veterans and kids. If we do that, we become a better people. And the Bible says, if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from becoming ineffective 
and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For everyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind and uh, has forgotten of the cleansing of uh, the past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call in the election, for if you do these things, you will not stumble, but you will be able to see far. Amen? You will be able to see far. You will be able to walk along a ground. You will be able to build a future for all of us. We will be able to, to build uh, uh, an opportunity that we can all go together. If any one of us falls sick and we go to hospital and we need the services of a doctor, do you first ask where that doctor comes from? What are your concerns? Is he a specialist in the problem I have? If he's a specialist in the problem you have, it doesn't matter which country he comes from or she comes from. That's how we need to approach how to see each other. When today you go to hospital and they say you, are, you, you don't have enough blood and the type of blood that dissociates uh, in your blood is found, do you ask from who? Or from which community? Do you ask those questions? What do you want at that time? Blood to make you survive. That's how much we need each other. That's how much we need to grow together. We need to care about our future and our tomorrow. It should be the same like when this beautiful girl finished school. We should never judge any one of them from the names that display their background when they are coming for opportunities for employment. We should employ them in equal measure with the merit they display. So that we have a country that, you know, four ways as opposed to who is connected to me and popular society. That's why we keep on reminding even those who are leading us at the national level that we need to see Kenya as Kenya and every one of us have equal opportunity and information, you know, opportunity and uh, capacity that will enable us to be present in the table that build this country. We need to keep together as the one that has been based here but we also need to share the same cake in together. This is what goes to us to do. For us to make sure that our elections and our calling is sure, let us be knowledgeable of the word of God, let us pressure each other, let us build each other's up, and for our girls, the future, as Martin Luther King Jr. says, uh, is in your hands. It is you to choose what to believe, whether the gods that are come and disappear or the God of heaven. But what we need to prosper and progress is not just in your teachers who are giving you knowledge now, it is right inside you. Amen? Amen. So can you talk to your neighbor and tell what you need to, to, to prosper and propel yourself to greatness? It's a choice you have to make that what I need to prosper and progress and excel is right inside me. Uh, what you get from my teachers is guidance, but it's you to choose to pick it and to run away with it. There are moments when people dismiss themselves, but there are also moments when people propel themselves to greatness irrespective of their background and where they have come from. I just told you a little bit of my background story, but if I chose not to propel myself, despite the background, through education and resilience, and uh, uh, being led by God and uh, follow Him, I will not be the bishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya today. So I'm not different from you. You can also become anyone in life. Amen? Amen. And as I see your faces, who are who I this voice? Are we going to get the next uh, mother of Yes. The chief justice of this country? Yes. From Amami? Yes. 
It is not just the religion and caste so that uh, a, a, a man has always been a president of this country. Can we get the first woman president from among you? Yes! Yes, it is possible. You can be the greatest scientist of all time, and then you can be able to go and take us to great places. Only when you put everything aside and put education and your relationship with God first, then you will serve. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to the Lord and say thank you for what he has done to us. Then, Madam Principal, we need us this cake and share it with all the Kenyans here and beyond. And then the DCC will say, but I'm going to win in our money. The DCC have not forgotten you and we are also taking you with us to Masoko for our own safety. So be here. As we as we give our offer today, we will see this hit or the non-teaching staff, you have a presentation. Sidney, go out. Sibasi Kuje. I will be the choir master if they are not there. Now, teaching staff, or school, you have a presentation.
the last presentation, which will be the best. Not now, of course. But we will give you time. See you. Yes. Can we all pray as we bless the afternoon? All good things come from you, O Lord. And all thy own have been given you. Bless and sanctify this for you are our use and your use, as you also sanctify us for your servants. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. It is with great humility that I want to invite the principal to invite the archbishop, and it is also at this time that I want the family picture to be taken. One with your husband and the archbishop at this time, then with the rest of the family. The rest can follow any order. Thank you. Thank you, Kajana. Your grace, which is where uh, with all the humility, that I have request that you come and uh, be at the care that I'm just in order to pursue the system. Are you ready, photographers? I'll be here. This is the time. As uh, you all know, in African tradition, when we have visitors, we prepare food uh, to have something with them. The Jigo girls is not an exception. So this morning, uh, our mom, together with our board of directors, uh, saw it wise that we prepare food. Uh, symbolically, we have prepared a cake here that uh, our visitor, uh, the Archbishop, plus our other guests are going to partake at the moment. Our cake has been prepared. The main ingredient is love. We have prepared this cake with a lot of love. And we believe as you are going to partake of it, you're going to feel at home with us. Welcome all. Thank you.
a distribute the care which I believe will reach our students. I want, I want to give you time to make your presentation as we go around here. Please go ahead.
If we all find our seats, then I will invite the DCC to make a remark and then the principal will come to tell us where next and we will have the benediction. Kadibo, leave. Okay, General, before benediction, uh, we shall request the phone calls to remain standing and we shall invite this place to pray for them and dedicate their minister target. So that will be there before the benediction is done. Karib. His grace, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya, our Bishop of Marcelo of his Diocese, my Reverend Dr. Pedro Obici, the whole family of the clergy that we have today, our new director of education, our regional TSC director, Mama Bishop, all the principals who are here with us today, the board of management with the class, all the staff who are with us here, the security team led by the security police commander, the, the Kaliho Nando, and the city commander. All other invited guests who are with us here and our wonderful students. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good and that is the end of our visiting Kadipo. And today, we have you around his dress. Isn't that God's doing? I'm sure your presence here is going to open our doors in a more enormous way. More so, the message you have left us with. Your humble beginning has clearly taught us that your background does not define who you become in the future. As I said yesterday, and I also want to repeat, that feel free to walk around, reach every corner of Kadipo, because you are very secure. We have our office of servants who have to ensure that our ambition is well and safe. And this will not be the only time for you to come around. Please make this area your second home. Munga Kopadiki, in the world you can say, the fire of the world. Thank you very much. 
the grace of spending time with us this morning. We are now on the move. We are moving to the next level. Uh, from here, after the benediction, all the invited guests, the board of management, uh, our wonderful uh, directors, who are in here where we shall be shown uh, together with uh, this grace, our Archbishop. Feel most welcome, and I thank all of you for gracing this occasion and making it colorful. And I want to pray that the good Lord shall bless you are going out of this room and find us with all some love that can be broken. Thank you so much. Thank you and thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. We want to do two things only. One, we shall walk this place, pray for the compass. During that time, see you where we lead us in our worshiping chorus, worshiping chorus. Something you know the word worship. And uh, when we come back, that we should be do the benediction. On behalf of my same East Diocese, on my behalf of the Diocese of Bishop, we say thank you. May God bless you. Our big archbishop is visiting us since yesterday and we will end with a consecration of our cathedral at ahead. We welcome all of you to be with us on that day. The service will start exactly at 9 the procession. We start from the bridge to the cathedral. All members of Medigo Girls, now that you say Medigo Girls is in my heart, I will be very, very happy to see you. It is a and a Thanksgiving service. Your chairman, if it's not there, I am just mentioned. Dr. Abdul, where are you? You promised. <laughs> So, receive that invitation with a lot of humility. We thank God for what he has done to us. I know Mr. Spooner is going to be there because he was baptized in this diocese. He is a member of the Christians in this diocese. Dr. Bukut is a member and a grand in law. I am not forgetting to give you your movie one of these days. I will bring it. Because your sister is not learned in this school yet. And you are aware. So may God bless us all. Thank you so, so much for being so disciplined, orderly. You are keeping the Anglican Church alive. God bless you. Worshiping chorus as we walk the ambition. Mm -hmm.